God, there's, there's no way to film this. There's no way to film this thing. I'm hungry. Bit of history, like ancient history. Before the beginnings of our universe, there was an explorer named Galen flying around at the end of his universe. And it's, it's deep into it, like gas prices are through the roof. Still a couple people wearing masks though. Anyway, as all of reality collapses in on itself, is crushed down smaller and smaller, Galen in his little ship, tighter and tighter into some kind of box. But he is not destroyed as his consciousness is merged with the sentience of the dying universe. Let's see what's inside there. I can't see it. What's it look like? <laughs> oh, wow. You serve me now! <laughs> Ridiculous. Well, while we're here, rock that forward. Galactus, HasLab, Marvel Legends series on the box here. And you just you get this awesome design work on the sides here. All this, these little Kirby-esque flourishes. It looks like that's just independent of the design. Yeah, yeah. But you get the Heralds here, Morg, the Surfer, Nova. God, that is such a nice piece. Has a number two there. This is the second one. There's not going to be a number three, it looks like, which is they don't need to hit us up every year. Really, they, they drop so many legends, you need about $2,000 just to cover your mainline releases throughout the year, and they want to hit you up four or $500 more for another item? Come on now. Come on now. You could just put your figures in front of this, right? Right? The world eating machine! It's all just gonna fall out. Okay, we'll just readjust a little bit as I pull these pieces out. And we'll transfer them over to the review station and see how that goes. As you can see, our humble explorer Galen survived his birth into our universe. But it was not perfect. He is not whole. He hungers. Behold, Galactus, the devourer of worlds. Okay, right away, visually, this thing is incredible. He is nearly half my height. Ridiculous. The aesthetic, I think, is just super on point. This is very Jack Kirby-esque. It, it definitely has some modern flair. I think Galactus is one of those designs where it's like so complex that probably even the original artist didn't replicate it exactly panel to panel. You know, so little changes. He's one of those rare characters where the little changes, I, they don't eat at me. I think they've done a great job. He really, really pops. Um, honestly, though, it's, this is all like cast plastic and stuff. There's, there's no extra paint detail on it. There are different colors, but it's like, I mean, even down here, it's, it's like tampography. They just, it's just like stamped on, you know? Which is, ah, ah. For the price of the thing, I, it would be nice to have little washes in the grooves and so on. But it is really cool. You can see in certain places, it's like they just cast different pieces and fit them in, you know. Whereas maybe a six inch one, we, we'd have been lucky they didn't just cast it all in one color of purple and walked away. You can see they've... they've... Yeah, it's, it's like stamped on a darker purple, the blues. While we're back here, battery compartment, you just sort of peel this up with your hand. Pretty easy, it has little plugs here that go in. You do need a screwdriver, two triple A's back there. And same thing, same thing in the head. You can just get a hold of any bit of this and it'll come off. They come off easily, but they fit back in snugly because there are little pegs and plugs and such. This actually looks like it's like painted, that sort of little metallic bits on the helmet as well. It's just hard to tell. Like I said, I think a lot of it's tampo because you can't... There's like not any slop on it or anything that you would get with a regular, like a factory trying to lay paint. H however they do it, man, I don't, I don't know. I seem to have allowed this, the armor piece to scuff the shoulder. Again, this is 
I mean, that's, that's hard brittle plastic. That's not a soft. This right here is, this is the more malleable plastic that we'd expect, but same, same with the skirt piece. Same with the, uh, it looks really, really good though. The only thing you can see here, this nice paint detail in the flesh of the face. The only thing that I would say would be, yeah, a nice little wash in, in the bulk of this purple undersuit, maybe the heavy purple on the arms and places like that. Um, here's another good example. You can see this is a separate color, but I think it's just, it's a separate cast piece that's, that's fit in there because it ends here. This is all just cast in one because it's way up here. I, I'm good with that. While we're taking a lookity look, press this button on the chest here, whole of it lights up. And it's just the one mode, one time. It's not like the Sentinel where you have like different button presses and holds and combinations. It's just gonna do the one thing. It'll flicker occasionally and kick back off after a minute. And you can see this comes through the back and here. Got a little button there. So that you could have you could have them lit independently. Two batteries here, two batteries in the back here. So I, I do love the color variation. However, they've chosen to achieve that. It looks sharp. It definitely, it could be a little more for the price. For those curious though, about the feet here. Sculpted detail on the feet, no peg holes though. What would those be like? Where would they go? Okay, let's get in here for a nice juicy pan job. I really love the detail on the face. And this is where the bulk of the like paint work went. The lips. The toy lips. And those square pupils. Oh, that's dark. Love that. Some of it, just the plastic like that, it just looks so flat, but. All this little extra detail around the wings, the head wings and everything else. There's so much work just in this helmet. It's awesome. Drink it in. Working back up from the feet. I mean, technically, technically we have paint on the back of a figure. You know what I mean? <laughs> there are these little lights and I was going to say exposed fasteners, but it is not that. No. In fact, the only fasteners are concealed by this plate. In the back of that big helmet. I mean, even the detail in there, it's like a little city. Styling and profiling. Where's Waldo? Where's Steve? All these crispy little additions, man. That's nice. I'm over here now. Checking out the accessories base package. It's really just a couple. A couple of mouth pots. Pretty nice though. And I've seen some people a little afraid to touch them, but you don't need a tool, you don't need anything. Just push a little bit on the side of his schnoz. Look at that, cosmic beak. I mean, I, I don't even have fingernails, yo. And then the reverse, you just, you just shove the thing in there. You know, shore up your corners a little bit, make sure it's nice and snug. And he is cosmically pissed. Who dares defy Galactus? <sighs> okay, round two. This is a bit deeper of a cut instead of just a different facial expression. With this piece, you could have like just a Galactus corpse, if you like. Come out of there pretty handily. Or your own insane take on the Galactus engine, a weaponized version from the Cancer Verse. Lovecraftian inspired cosmic eldritch horror. I don't know, maybe you just hate his lips. Uh, 2008 era cosmic stuff, Annihilation, the Guardians of the Galaxy run, Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning. Galactus was disassembled and weaponized by the many angled ones. It's super effective! Now, that's just the tip of the Lipsburg. You see, this was a crowdfunded thing, and as those go, they're going to have stretch goals that appear, you know, get to so many backers, get a new, what, 
what have you. Well, of course, we blew this thing out of the water, like some 30,000 maniacs back to Galactus. That hit all the tiers, all the stretch goals. That got us Nova, Frankie Ray, a female human torch imbued with the power cosmic. She is a marbleized plastic body with a nice new head. Comes with this awesome flame base accessory and several sets of interchangeable hands, fists, and graspers, and wide open. Getting her right up in here for a little twirl. Not bad to look at. All the modern amenities, double jointed, pinless. If you got the Shriek figure, the shield, agent, spinneret, you essentially have this same body. So a long-standing tradition for Galactus is to have a herald, a, a, an advanced scout that finds new worlds for him to consume. Throughout his existence, he has enthralled various beings and imbued them with a bit of his own cosmic power. The most famous of these is undoubtedly Norrin Rad, the Silver Surfer. This was the second stretch goal, and he is just essentially a repaint of the previous two Silver Surfers, just with a new head. Also comes with a nice little complement of hands, a couple of Space Surfers, Wall Crawlers, Single Power Effect, a nice grippable base, all of Frankie Ray, and the Silver Surf Board. Tightening up on the Sentinel of the Spaceways here. It is a perfectly serviceable rendition of Norrin Rad. Also, really nicely articulated. He's just missing a couple of things. But you can get him into some really slick, dynamic poses. Now, they say that good things come in threes, but this last guy, he's a real dirtbag. This is Morg, the third tier unlock and final herald to come with our Galactus. This is a new character, new sculpt, limited accessories. He just comes with his cosmic battle axe. Morg is the strongest of the Heralds and had no such compunctions about, you know, eating habited worlds. Take a closer look at this guy. Look at this awesome sculpting on here. And there is a nice paint wash if that's not detectable in there. Really killer face sculpt. Wash in the hair too. It almost makes up for this just cast plastic silver. What are you going to do? Cuts a really powerful figure though. If you've made it here, you've probably seen my individual breakdowns of the Heralds 3. If not, feel free to check those out right here on the channel. But wait, there's more! The fourth and final tier unlock in the HasLab Galactus campaign. I know, I know, we all wanted another figure, you know. But instead, we get the fairly obscure Doom. This is an optional Dr. Doom head for our Galactus. It is really nicely detailed. He's got the sweet hellish goat pupils textured robe here. No extra paint detail on that. Nice and squishy. But this is actually from just a couple of years ago, the uh, relaunch of the Marvel 2-in-1 stuff. Chip Zdarsky, uh, Ben, and Johnny were searching the multiverse for the rest of their family and found a universe where they failed to stop Galactus. But Doom didn't. Doom actually invaded the Devourer's mind and conquered his body. Ate like every freaking planet in that universe. I know people are pissed, but those are some really solid stories, that Marvel 2-in-1 Marvel stuff from just a few years ago. It's like the second arc. It's great. And that goes right on here. Let's see if we can swap this out without destroying everything. Ha! Don't do it like that, man. What are you... Wiggle, 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 yeah! I know, I know, how awesome would like Airwalker or some other stupid jerk have been. But we're still getting Terax and the Fallen One and uh, I, I got Fire Lord here somewhere, old Flame and Q-Tip. So ultimately our $400 got us got us all of this. It's, it's pretty rad. Richards! For articulation, he really has a lot going on here. Most of the standard Marvel Legends stuff that you would expect. His head is on a really crazy type of joint, though. It's like a ball joint, but it's not shaped like a ball at all. Mm -hmm. It's just this thing so the light can pass through. Great big hollow in there. So you get you get a little bit of range here. Make sure that snaps back down. Not really. You get sort of a, a little tilt back, a little tilt forward. Just the littlest bit of rock. The nature of that, having the lights through there. Really kind of, it limits that the way they built it, but it's, it's not major. 
We've got ball jointed shoulders in here. You can see some nice space they've left. And this is actually much, much uh, more brittle, a harder plastic than you might think. It's not the standard like little rubber overlays that we get on the regular figures. Also, like every joint is ratcheted. Heavy, heavy ratchets. These come up to a T. They will rotate all the way around. Again, watch this. See, it's kind of brittle. It's not so soft. Yeah, it just kind of split there and kind of gets in a bind, but you could push that right back. He has a bicep cut here. <laughs> it's also ratcheted. Double jointed, pinless. Ratcheting, you can hear the ratchets. Both sides, it runs into the gauntlet piece here, so you get about a 90. So midway down the forearm here too, this, this rotates. But I mean, God, that's ratcheted too, except it just, never mind the loud clicks that sound like you're breaking it. It's just a ratcheted joint. Okay, down here at the wrist. This thing ports in there a little ways, so that limits it a little bit, but this has a hinge going in and out. He does not have like extra hands for different, uh, different expressions. Instead, he has fully articulated digits here. Every finger has multiple joints, all of the knuckles. Really cool thing though, is the, uh, the pad on the palm where his thumb is. You get some extra range on that. That, that definitely helps for, for balling up fists and, and clutching characters just right. So on. Down here at the waist, it becomes kind of a jumbly mess. So if you're really looking, this kind of disguises this line here. This is a diaphragm cut. Diaphragm cut. Um, it being so heavy though, it really uh, it doesn't even move. It's almost, it's probably ratcheted heavily. You can sort of rock it forward a little bit. Back a little bit, come on now, big G. And it's hard because you'll start moving this too. He's actually got an ab crunch. You can see the outline of that here. Follow that sucker all the way around. And it disappears somewhere behind the belt, behind the, the battle dress, the skirt. It's really difficult to articulate those independently. It's such a big juicy hog. I'll tear this whole thing down. You may have to like my Hulkbuster. It's like a child. You gotta lay it on the floor and, and manipulate the legs and whatever. This is actually a much softer plastic here, the skirt piece, and it's in several sort of shingled sections so that that really, it really doesn't impede the articulation as much as you would think at first glance. We can kind of pull some of this out of the way and get a good look at this crotchal region. And we see that it is a standard like Marvel Legends ball joint, except, you ready for this? Ah, heavy, heavy ratchets, but look, this dude can do the splits. How crazy is that? So while we're in there, you can see that it's just kind of a basic joint. He does have this thigh cut. Ah, kick me right in the head. You can bring this forward a little. Go. Pardon? Not really, it kind of impedes it coming that way. Same thing, ah, coming back. Now we're getting into it, huh? Okay, double jointed, pinless knee. Ratchets abound, boys and girls. Uh, uh, uh. Ratcheted calf cut. And then we do have these standard Marvel Legends ankle coming back like this. It runs into these bits and bobs here. Comes forward this far. This is really malleable as well, so that definitely gets out of the way. And uh, you know it, he's got some ankle rocker. That might be the one place where it's not ratcheted is the side to side on the ankles. But these are nice and sturdy. I wouldn't say stiff, but I would say sturdy. Not worried about those ankles. Or the knees, not a bit. Ugh. Sometimes you gotta readjust his skirt. God, what have I done to you? What, what, have, you, what have you done to me? Hands itching. <laughs> this definitely gets bunched up when you twist and tweak on it as much as I just did. So I'm really impressed by the articulation. It's freaking awesome. But the way that even like, um, <laughs> even the bicep cuts and things are ratcheted, that, that kind of smacks of like a malicious compliance, doesn't it? At least he's not gonna fall over.
Don't say that. Wouldn't let you fall, big guy. Okay, how we do, let's check the height of this hog. We know what the rated height's supposed to be, right? Where is he falling in that regard? Yeah, right about 32 inches, maybe 31 three quarters I'm seeing to the tippy top of the ear wing. Maybe if you pinch them legs in a little tighter. Wow. First up on the comparison block, giving the people what they want. This is the last HasLab offering the Sentinel. A little bit cheaper, no less amazing. No sounds, but they both light up. This is the Marvel Universe Galactus. Three and three quarter inch scale. He is from just over a decade ago. And you know, we got to the Marvel Universe Sentinel. Same scale, same deal. In their day, these were 50 and $55. Don't tell anybody, but I went into a Ross and found the Sentinels for 25. I bought three of them. Mm. They both feature lights and sounds. We'll get you something to eat, bud. What are you, a racist? I would be remiss if I did not mention he also came with a Silver Surfer figure. And this was the variant color scheme appearing in the Marvel Ultimate Alliance video game. That's how long ago this was. Here he is next to a NECA quarter scale Ninja Turtle. Purple is a fruit. There is no Jack Kirby figure that I know of, but I do have the Hot Toys 1 6 scale Stan Lee. You know, I turned into the Hulk once. Sure you did, Stan. Let's go back inside. Ah! Holy shit, he wasn't lying. Okay, we got a Hulk sighting. We better call on the big guns. This next one, this is far and away my favorite action figure. This is my grail. Veronica! <laughs> this is the Hot Toys 1 6 scale Hulk Buster armor. I love my new Galactus, but for me, no one can dethrone her. I know, we're, we're talking a whole different league of toy here. But size-wise, it's like how often do I does it make sense to compare it to anything? She was twice the price, and it's truly a premium thing. Die-cast metal parts, painted detail out the wazoo, shiny, weathering, battle damage, swappable damaged parts, light up features, 27 little arc reactors that light up all over the thing. Articulated digits, it's a fully articulated action figure. It's heavy duty, so you, you gotta put hands on it if you want these pieces to move. Little details, like the gauntlets are modular. They come out here, smoke launchers, all of that. Uh, most freakish of all. Most freakish of all. It houses an actual 1-6 scale Iron Man armor that you can, you can take out of there. You can put in there. I don't mean to turn this into a thing where I'm gushing about my Hulkbuster, but that's like the only state that I have around my Hulkbuster. So grateful. So grateful to have this. To have, to have all of this and to have you guys here watching. I know, I know, shut up. It's just something Hot Toys does really well. The likenesses and these Iron Man armors are freaking works of art. But seriously, it weighs like 30 pounds. I gotta like lay it down like a child to manipulate and articulate the legs. Look at all this stuff going on with the feet. This thing, this is not falling over. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't even, I can't even. Come on over here, just a little. Smell you. How about we throw in a few vehicles? This is a vintage Playmates Mini Technodrome. Big shout out to my boy Kevin for hooking this up so long ago. Mmm, I'm just remembering Bob's been in there for years. How you doing, Bob? I just want to die. Fantastic. Here is a Jazzware Star Wars Micro Galaxy Squadron X-Wing. Like a friggin' gnat to him. And you know what? I teased it before. What the hell? This was for the Marvel Universe line, not necessarily in scale any which way, but this is the Shield Helicarrier. Ish, you know. Uh, this is what I was talking about, though. Where are you gonna display it? Flying? It's got a friggin' hollow bottom. Nasty. This thing was $80. Ah. Walked into Toys R Us one day, though, and it was 33 while we're shouting people out, my buddy Sean and I decaled this sucker on the floor of my apartment like a decade ago. Good times. Here's a Marvel Universe Silver Surfer. 
three and three quarter inch figures really inflate that sense of scale. What uh, what was the point of this one again? And finally, here is the Marvel Legends HasLab Galactus next to the Marvel Legends Morning Coffee, mostly Bucky Cap Deadpool. I'm hungry. What's up, hungry? I'm Wade. So, we've been waiting over a year for this hog. Is it worth it? Come on, you've been watching the video. I love this thing. The sculpt work is just like the highest tier Marvel legend. Really, it sets the standard for, for, for everything like that. And it should be, that's expected, I think, the, the size of this beast. The way that it's upscaled, that allows you to add more detail. This was kind of a lot of money, but they, they explained it to us up front that we, as the end users, are footing like the tooling bill, basically, that the big box stores initially generally would. You know, whatever and whatever, 400 bucks for the thing. But wouldn't you know it, just, just before this, I looked him up on the secondary, and he's, he's only going for double the price. He's only going for about double, a little more in some cases. The Sentinel right away was going for triple. So, yeah, you know what I mean? And I see the Heralds floating around, 80, 100 bucks a pop. <laughs> for what are essentially $20 figures, repaints of $20 figures. Damn lucky if you ever found him at retail for $20. Brand new character, brand new character. Silly doom head. And just the level of work and, and, and love that went into this thing. I know I hesitated to say love. Love makes me think a little paint wash in there. I don't mean to harp on that. And the way that all those joints are ratcheted, my god. For anyone who wasn't there, it was like knee gate with the Sentinel. And I just heard someone recently try to downplay that. Well, at any rate, I do have one with loose knees, but it's really only a problem if he's leaning certain directions. I've had him displayed this whole time thrashing my X-Men for like a year w without incident. Mostly, I think we should just be upset because they didn't come out and publicly address that. <laughs> they obviously took some steps to remedy it this go around. I wrote in my notes, you can only say that one time. <laughs> I'm stoked. I had to redo the thing. I was way too excited before. <sighs> needed some needed some time to chill. Ease into this. I thought, man, let's just let's also just shoot some just some special Herald videos. Not like the whole nine, but maybe like eight. You know? Ah! I'm always trying to get better at my craft here, my, my passion. I got all kind of passion, dude. This is what I do. I review toys and this is what I live for. Big, bombastic, deluxe, amazing, cosmic, eldritch horror. What, 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 what are you saying even anymore, man? I'm saying that I really, really like this thing. I'm really happy with the purchase. It's mostly here for a look. It's not like you have the option to go buy it off the shelf. It was a, a crowdfunded campaign that closed last summer. It's there if you want it, but like I said, I mean, it's going for about double the price now. Do I think it's worth eight, nine hundred dollars? Not really, not really. That's crazy. But if that's not that much to you, if that's no sweat to you, I, what? Who am I to tell you how to spend your money? Go broke over it, man. That's half a mortgage payment. I am the guy that bought the Hulkbuster. You know what? It should have freaking sounds. It should have freaking sounds. What's dude's name? George something something. He was like the president of Hasbro, and he provided the voice work for this guy. This guy does talk. He was a lot cheaper price-wise, but he's a lot cheaper in general. This thing is in no way cooler than this thing. I still love it, though. Busting him out for comparisons, I realized how much I do still love this little guy. Nothing ratcheted and no issues with the knees or any of that. And no finger or tick, but hey. Even over it being an above and beyond action figure. The little touches, like bases for the heralds that clip onto the hands. Not just swappable expressions, but the friggin' cosmic corpse. Just right here, this is more painted detail than you get on most regular Marvel Legends. I mean, I've got a couple of gripes, but I have so much good to say about this thing. Just in the simplest sense, action figure guy, this is one of the nicest action figures I've ever seen. I've ever seen. It should be for that price. Come on now. Come on now. How about I plug one more great modern Galactus tale? Donny Cates' run of Thor, the first six issues where Thor becomes his herald. Galactus seeks him out personally to stop something called the Endless Winter. Thor with the Odin Force. He gives him a portion of the power cosmic, a guy with the Odin Force already. <laughs> Who is so ignorant? 
Anyway guys, I'm just rambling now, but this stuff really means a lot to me. I hope you at least found it entertaining, if not altogether useful. I know you already left a like. I know you're already subscribed, and I know you're gonna let this video play right through to the end, man. So helpful. So helpful. I've had a blast putting this thing together. And I wonder what happens after this health charger fiasco. If you're not sick of me yet, I've got a lot of other videos up on the channel. More all the time. Thanks again, guys. Let me show you something. Damn it, Reed, you're gonna scare him away.